Hi, I'm Venus Lavider. Uh, I graduated with the project Broodje Poop Shit Sandwich, and I build a huge wagon where I sell sandwiches where the ingredients have grown on compost made of human poo and pee. And with it, I close the food cycle and I give shit its worth that it deserves. Uh, I graduated with this project from uh, Department Men and Leisure and uh, last September. So uh, a year further and here we are. Mm. Hectic. I needed a holiday like everybody else. <laughs> and then was uh, the graduation show, which was hectic as well. But for me, it was a bit different because I've uh, had a, like a year before I graduated, I was out of a, a school. I took a, a took a took a break or a break. I worked for a design studio and uh, I started my own uh, studio already. So for me it wasn't that big of a shift. I kind of knew what was what was coming a bit. Will you ever? But uh, so it's it wasn't that big of a shift for me at that point. My biggest achievement after graduating is funny enough, it's kind of determining what I want and shaking this feeling of success. It's you get a, 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 an image of what you think success is or what you want to achieve and then you start out on your own and then you realize kind of more and more in a slow way what it is that you really want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and just I just the luxury of just figuring shit out, you know, it just yeah, figuring shit out. And I've always I've, I've become a designer, a social designer, because I wanted to uh, embark in worlds that I did not know existed or that I wasn't aware of. And uh, yeah, being a self-employed designer is one of them as well. Yeah, but not always a fun one. <laughs> But it's not fun because it's difficult. I mean, you are you are responsible for all the things. You're responsible for the contact that you have with the people around you. Which step are you going to take? Is this is this investment a good investment? You know, where are you going to live? I mean, the living, working, everything merges. Then you're you're a manager of yourself. You're a manager of your life. You're a manager of your company or your endeavor. Um, and it's it's a it's a balance between doing what you really want to do, but become and also being becoming aware of the things that you want to do, to be, yeah, to be able to come there. You just need a lot of repetition, and you need a lot of clarity, and you need a lot of preparation, and you need a lot of just typing this sentence over and over again. Yeah. My biggest challenge is, funny enough, knowing knowing when to become businessy. So my name is Fides, which means trust. So I've been embarked in this idea that I want to trust the world, and if I have a nice contact, of course I want to do that, and of course. Uh, but really, also knowing that if you just make. Um, and if you just make uh, rules, not rules, but I, I said, just if you're just sure of, if you make an agreement, if you make an agreement beforehand of this is what the assignment's gonna be, very clear, this is what I'm getting paid for it, this is the hours that I will put in in it, of course you're gonna be more, but you calculate it in, just be very businessy about it, it can help a lot. It can help so much because it it's again putting your own boundaries, and that's the, yeah that's the thing I learned the much the most. It's it's I I don't I know funny enough I find it very I find it kind of um, suddenly a large group of people really uh, dealt with the insecurities that you as a designer uh, yeah deal with. On a day-to-day -day basis, not knowing where your money is coming from, not knowing what's going to happen. Of course, COVID is a completely different scale. I don't want to compare it, but this sense of 
shit what's gonna happen and to find relief in that and to just relax and see where it happens and trust yourself that it will be okay that part i think i already trained that so i could handle it way better than my friends could uh, so that was it really uh, funny and next to that I, I i did a project then it's called coming soon and i could uh, obtain two uh, shopping windows and i because i was really um, fascinated by this waiting that was going on and this this unease with this waiting we were so uneased with doing nothing um, and my friend said my biggest um, um, my biggest use at, in, at this moment is being useless sitting at home and doing nothing that's my biggest use and then I started to think oh we are so driven on use in this society so we created these, I, me and I did this with somebody else, Matthijs Groos, we created these shop windows and we asked people there to be useless in. So we had two chairs and people were invited to go into the shop window and sit and be useless. And it was very funny, this, this because you also would uh, show this uselessness, you put it on the stage. Uh, and this interaction with the people and uh, we put it on uh, Instagram and there was quite some traction and eventually the waiting list of people who wanted to be useless and people made a spiritual trip in this time that they were useless and they had this whole conversation about oh I judge people and judge myself if I'm useless but that's even useless as being useful because it's just being and other people were completely depressed other people were completely happy it did a lot Doing nothing did so much for people. So that was really the thing that I took away from it in this society. My dream for the near future. Yeah. Dreams are mo mostly things that are always, are never near. <laughs> They're always further away. Uh, so you can dream about them. Um, so for my near fu future, uh, I don't know. I just, yeah, I know for the far future. <laughs> My dreams for the far future are that designers and artists get a seat on the table. I think that we deal with more diff difficult issues than we've dealt with uh, yeah, a few years ago. And I think artists and designers can really help with that because we, again, have been taught to think differently about things but also handle this stress or handle this unease and just look at things differently. I think it's really needed right now and I really want to see that just that they have a seat on the table. One, that they get invited to it and secondly that they don't uh, turn it down but are gonna sit at it. <laughs> Make a little dance. No, it um, I don't know it would be it would be really a um, recognition because I never really felt that uh, social design or the way I handle uh, design I, I feel a lot of times there's a do not touch um, um, badge on it and for me it's do touch and I never really felt at home <laughs> in this design world I feel as a designer as a social designer but never felt at home in this world and really getting the acknowledgement for this nomination but also the acknowledgement of maybe winning it's a really big one of yeah this do touch method and this getting the nitty and gritty and getting in difficult issues is really something that is also appreciated in the design world um, and uh, the money is a welcome bonus <laughs> but that's with everybody yeah. oh I've got so many plans <laughs> well I'm currently um, having a few projects going that could really need to use a Kickstarter. Um, so I'm making this documentary about Let's Talk About Shit um, that, that really gives more depth to this shit topic. Um, talking with experts and uh, uh, I really would like to... I'm, I started but I'm, I'm searching for funding so that would be a, a starter and way more projects to come.